Himmelhoes is a great part of Detroit history, and now we're back. Himmelhoes is a chic department store that will always carry unique designs, allowing you to express your individuality. Founded in 1876, we came to Detroit in 1907. We're a family business, so in the story of our department store, business and family history are intertwined. We pronounce our family name as Himmelhoek. However, everyone referred to the store as Himmelhoes over the years. Depending on context, we use both references in this video. My name is Carol Himmelhoek. My brother Chip and I are fourth generation Himmelhoeks. We're honored to share our history, which spans over 100 years. Pictured here are the renowned Himmelhoek brothers. Seated in the center is my great-grandfather, Wolf. The brothers, moving from left to right, are Zella, or Zell, Herman, Israel, and Moses, or Mose. Originally from Sasmaken, close to the port of Windau, the Himmelhoek brothers were third generation of Himmelhoes who settled in America. Samuel Himmelhoek, their father, was born in 1808 in Sasmaken, and his father, Zevi Himmelhoek, was born there in the 1790s. Wolf, Isaac, and Meyer were three brothers who immigrated from the province of Courland, Latvia, to the small town of Caro, which is in the thumb of Michigan. Wolf, Isaac, and Meyer eventually operated competing businesses, Wolf one and Isaac and Meyer the other in Caro. Isaac and Meyer eventually moved to Seattle, Washington, concurrent with the gold rush. Wolf and his wife Bloom had four sons, pictured here, and these four sons were the Himmelhoek brothers, who with their father Wolf eventually landed in Detroit and started the store there. Herman Himmelhoek was the oldest Himmelhoek brother and died in 1943 at age 73. For years in Cairo, it was his dedication and family love that kept the bread on the table and sustained their family effort. Herman regularly worked from 6 in the morning till 11 at night. He performed janitorial duties, prepared his selling inventory, and then took care of all customers until the last one left. Finally, late at night, he handled paperwork. At age 14, he made his first trip to the New York market. He made the store a fashion leader. He was one of the few long-gone merchant geniuses who could run his hand over fabric with, a, with his eyes closed and evaluate it. At the, at, after the Detroit store opened, he excelled at selecting his own piece goods and fur skins and helped his designer buddies style their lines. Henry Fredericks, one of the nation's largest coat manufacturers, told Chuck that when he was going broke in 1926, Herman saved his life when he created for him one of the great fashion highlights of the 1920s, the steamer coat. Herman designed the original 20-ish tubular sil silhouette tweed coat with its large fox shawl collar, making Fredericks a very wealthy man. Herman was responding to a need that he observed when he was crossing the Atlantic for Paris showings. Chuck Himmelhoek helped to launch the early career of Calvin Klein when Klein at the time was designing coats and suits. Chuck featured his coat collection across Himmelhoek's stores. As Estee Lauder was launching her cosmetic line and department stores across the country, she spent a week in each store, including Himmelhoek's Detroit flagship store, meeting customers and training salespeople to understand her line deeply. Wolf formed a close relationship with the Marshall Field Organization during his buying trips to Chicago. In 1907, backed with funding from Marshall Fields, Wolf and his sons opened the store in downtown Detroit, Michigan, on Woodward Avenue in the building shown here, next to Hudson's and directly across the street from Ben Siegel, or B. Siegel's, which was the largest women's ready-to-wear operator between Chicago and Detroit. In March 7, on March 17, 1907, the Detroit Free Press described the grand opening, quote, Palms and flowers set among an array of lovely new gowns and suits made the big show windows at 180-182 Woodward Avenue one of the attractive spots along the thoroughfare yesterday. 
the early focus was on women's and misses ready to wear including quote everything from malbari silk petticoats to elaborate evening gowns and from a negligee to an opera coat will be kept in variety the physical store was reported in the detroit free press article to have quote a fine exterior and an attractive interior mahogany fixtures green tinted walls and green carpeted floors handsome mirrors and display cases make a restful and harmonious interior between 1910 and 1920 detroit's population doubled and himmelho's store achieved exceptional growth in 1915, the store employed 60 people. In 1957, which was the 50th anniversary of the stores, the Detroit News reported that Himmelhose employed 600 people with offices in New York, Paris, and Detroit. The store moved to the Washington Arcade Building after the J.L. Hudson Company purchased Himmelhose's initial downtown Detroit location. The new building had seven floors and two entrances, one at 1545 Woodward Avenue and the other on Washington Boulevard. The building was an existing structure brought to a state of exceptional beauty when it was remodeled by Albert Kahn. Its impressive ceiling was admired by architects and customers alike. According to an interview with 99-year-old Chuck Himmelhoek in October of 2018, the street level housed toiletries, accessories, handkerchiefs, hosiery, and non-clothing items. Coats and a fur salon were located on the second floor. The third floor is where better dresses, millinery, handbags, and shoes were sold. On the fourth floor, one could find dresses and the bridal salon. Casual clothing, aka beach and play clothes, were housed on the fifth floor. The top two floors were not used as sales spaces. Executive offices were on the seventh floor. Here is a close-up of the beautiful ceiling adorning the entrance on Woodward Avenue. The building was given historical designation, so much of its beauty is preserved today. This is a photo of father and son Israel and Chuck Himmelhoek, Mr. I and Mr. Charles. Israel Himmelhoek died in 1973 at age 87. Because he was the last surviving brother, his long tenure and the performance status the store achieved, he was by far the best known of the brothers. He had none of the empire builder traits of his father and brothers, having first been a lawyer in New York before joining the store in Detroit in 1915, eight years after it opened. He, ha he made the most of his life as a Detroiter. He dined weekly at the Statler Hotel, lived in the Whittier Hotel on Detroit's riverfront, and took regular morning swims, walks, and even rode horseback on Belle Isle. He was a Wilsonian Democrat, which was a vivid contrast to his staunch Republican brothers. He was the only brother with a college education, having graduated both from Columbia University and Harvard Law School. Israel was a trustee of the Detroit Symphony Orchestra and the Detroit Civic Theater, member of the Detroit Library Commission, the Economic Club of Detroit, director of the Detroit Shopping News, the Retail Merchants Association, the Better Business Bureau, and the Central Business District Association. He served as president of Temple Bethel for five years and was appointed by President Franklin D. Roosevelt to the Michigan Regional Labor Board during the Great Depression. Chuck Himmelhoek, called Mr. Charles by his team, graduated from Cranbrook Schools in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, and Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut. He began working at Himmelhoek's as a stock boy after four years of service in the United States Army. Chuck advanced into leadership after serving virtually in every capacity, albeit salesperson, coat buyer, merchandise manager, and other positions vital to a deep understanding of the business. Reflecting back to his experience as coat buyer, he said, according to a Free Press article in January 30, 1977, we used to know a lot more than they do today about the merchandise. A heck of a lot more pure wools, cottons, and silks were used. They were, there weren't so many variations of man-made fabrics. We even knew the labor setup for each garment. 
Chuck was known as a man of ideas, according to the Detroit Free Press in 1967. For example, when the Northland store branch added its second level, Chuck implemented the taste level strategy that eventually was executed throughout the chain. Merchandise purchased by buyers from numerous departments was placed in one area of the store and sold by a shared sales force. A divergence from practices of other department stores and women's specialty stores, taste level provided agility that was comparable to the advantage enjoyed by smaller specialty boutiques. Chuck was a leader in retail trade organizations and was director of the Better Business Bureau, the Better Business Bureau, Detroit Community Trust, the Central Business District of Detroit, and the Retail Merchants Association of Detroit. He was active at Meadowbrook Theater, the Anthony Wayne Society of Wayne State University, Rotary International, the Detroit Institute of Arts, Detroit Area Council of Boy Scouts of America, and belonged to Franklin Hills Country Club, the Standard Club, Club and the Bloomfield Open Hunt Club, where he became a life member. Nationally, he was chairman of the Ready to Wear Committee and member of Vendor Relations Committee of the National Retail Merchants Association and treasurer, treasurer of Specialty Stores of America. Isabel, Chuck's wife, was known to employees as Mrs. Charles. She passed away at age 85 in February of 2018. She served as better dress buyer and fashion coordinator and drew upon her retail management experience at Bergdorf Goodman in New York. She had a keen ability to forecast fashion trends. She always said she watched the children's fashion market to forecast what women's wear would adopt in the upcoming seasons. And she was always right. Frank Angelo, former reporter for the Detroit Free Press covered a two-day meeting at the Holiday Inn at which she educated 300 employees on upcoming fashion trends. At a breakfast meeting, she was, quote, the commentator, commentator an enthusiastic and knowledgeable one at that, while Chuck hovered in the sidelines, ready to jump in, uh, give a hand, and push around racks of clothes, or make sure a model appeared on time. In that meeting, Isabel explained to employees in language that encapsulated fashion at the time, quote, We're in a fashion cycle that makes sense. The key words are classic, practical, quality, and comfortable. Depicted here are third and fourth generation Himmelhoes, taken at Chuck's 80th high school reunion at Cranbrook Schools in June of 2018. Chuck is President Emeritus, Chip and Carol, and Carol's husband Steve, are the current generations running the family business. We're grateful to Chuck for teaching us the values of our store, high fashion, and high service to our customers and to our community. The caption testimony here is unsolicited, but emblematic of how customers value Himmelhoes. This was found online in a discussion forum entitled Detroit Yes. I shopped at Himmelho's many years ago and it was a wonderful store with lovely clothes, real salespeople, and they had alterations. The clothes were quality made, nice materials, and fit so nicely. I purchased many beautiful work and after hours dresses at Himmelho's. We've served you well over the years. The customer testimony in that previous slide dem demonstrates our reputation for delighting our customers. We also have a tradition of supporting the careers of our fashion designers. We fourth generation Himmelhoes are excited to continue our family tradition, contributing to the current growth of Detroit's fashion design movement and providing opportunities for fashion forward designers. Our platform is here for our customers to find high quality, unique, limited edition apparel, accessories and home goods. And we offer products from companies you feel good about supporting. We're a department store that offers a foundation for ethical and talented designers. Their designs are our passion. Please vis visit our website to see how we're continuing our, tradition, our traditions at Himmelhose.com. Thank you.